Hello, I'm David Scherer, and I'm here for another very brief bonus video in Physics 572, Introduction to Health Physics. Today, I posted a homework assignment uh, that asks you to calculate the air chroma rate from a point source. Um, I may not have covered that as thoroughly in the lecture as I would have liked, so I'm going to give you a, a, a brief video here, uh, highlighting an example of that kind of calculation. And so let me share my screen so that we can uh, proceed. Okay, uh, this is a slide from the, it's a, adapted from a slide in the video, the Kerma rate from a point source uh, uh, that we described. So if S is the emission rate, number of particles per second, then uh, as we said in the video, the dose rate or Kerma rate in air um, is the once number of uh, particles per unit uh, per unit area per time uh, times the, uh, that's a flux. Excuse me, the flux uh, times the energy times the uh, mass uh, energy absorption coefficient. The um, uh, flux is the source emission rate divided by four pi r squared. <clears throat> All of the Particles are emitted from this sphere and go, intercept the surface area somewhere. Okay, um, so now I want to talk about what happens if you have multiple photons rather than a single photon being emitted from the source. Well, in that case, the Kerma rate, you just have, you have to do this for each photon energy individually. Each photon energy might have a different uh, flux would have a different energy. It might have a different absorption coefficient. And so um, we have the flux rate for each individual isotope is the activity of a, of a point source. That's the number of transformations per second. And then the yield for a given isotope, uh, that is how, what, how, how frequently that energy is emitted. And then uh, the, the uh, flux is divided by 4 pi r squared. So here's an example, cobalt 60. Uh, in each decay, it, well, this this uh, uh, nuclide gives off two different gamma rays. It also gives beta particles, but we're interested now in calculating the gamma ray uh, kerma. So um, it gives off two different gamma rays, uh, and so we have to look at the total activity here, how many transformations per unit per second, and then how frequently each different gamma ray is emitted. So let's, given this, uh, substituting in for phi there, we can take the A and the 4 pi r squared out, and then we have inside the summation only those elements that are related to, that are nuclide or energy specific outside is uh, the other thing. So if we have a 10 mega becquerel source, and we're measuring uh, the dose rate or calculating the Kerma rate at 100 centimeters, uh, we have to use centimeters because our mu n is in grams per square centimeter, so we have to be consistent with units. But A over 4 pi r squared, that coefficient out front, calculates out to be 79.58 uh, per square centimeter per second. Okay? Um, so let's do, we did the front part, now let's do the inner part. Let's add up the, these components. We have the decay data for cobalt 60, it has two photons. These are the energies of the photons. This is our um, HPS uh, decay data database. The frequency speed over here. Mu e n over rho we got from, I got from the uh, uh, NIST uh, website. Let's see if I've got a, I think I've got a copy of it in here. Uh, well, I don't, so let me pull it up. I'm sure you would believe me, but I want to, see if I can show you uh, this is for air and we're talking about uh, uh, energy of 1.25 MeV and the energy absorption coefficient is 2.66 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay so that's what I've got 2.66 times 10 to the minus 2 not 10 to the minus 6. 2.66 times 10 to the minus 2 that's 0.02666. Uh, I'm using both of them because both of these actually average out to 1.25 MeV. 
um, if you if you calculate the average, and they're both very close. So given the data we have, this, these are the closest values we have. We could do some interpolation. This is going to be good enough for what we want to do. So I have to multiply these three numbers together, and I do that, get the product over here. We have to add up <coughs> both um, products for uh, the two different gamma rays, and that's the sum we get. So we have the coefficient, 79.58 from the first page, plus this sum, or times this sum, we multiply them together, and the Kramer rate is 5.314 MeV per gram second. Not a very useful unit. I think I mentioned in the lecture there's a conversion factor. Uh, we're going to convert MeV per gram. This is joules per kilogram. That's what this number here is. And there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. So we're going to get, do away from a dose rate per second to a dose rate per hour. So when we multiply all these factors out, we end up with 3.07 times 10 to the minus 6 grades per hour, or 3.07 micrograves per hour. And that's what the dose rate is. This is a relatively straightforward way to do it. Uh, just wanted to give you an example of, of one worked out. I do want to point out that this air chroma rate from uh, photon sources is, is a common tool used in health physics. Uh, there is a, a, a quantity called the specific gamma ray constant. It's symbolized with a capital letter gamma. It's often called the gamma factor. And there are tables and tables and tables with th these factors, the gamma factors for many, many nuclides. The more recent tables are in SI units. They give the air chroma at some specified distance, frequently one meter, uh, from a point source with a specified activity, frequently one becquerel. I think I did 10 becquerels in my example, but typically they might do one, or they might do it for one becquerel, and it would be a very small number, 10 to the minus 6 or something. Um, but once you have the gamma factor, you can calculate the dose rate for a given uh, source by just multiplying by the activity of the source. And once you know the, the dose rate at a meter, you can get it at a different distance using the inverse square law. <clears throat> if you look at older tables, they'll be in the traditional units where the exposure rate is specified at a, either a meter or a centimeter. Those are common uh, distances in the tables. And the activity will often be a, a one curie or one millicurie. And so you'll find tables out there like that. This is a more recent one. This thing was published... Uh, well, it's published in Health Physics, uh, and, and this gives the gamma factor for different nuclides in millisieverts per hour per megabecquerel. And I believe these were published at a meter. And so you'll have the different values. This is for each megabecquerel and uh, millisieverts per hour. They have these constants available. So if I have a particular isotope, I can uh, take these factors... Again, knowing how many megabecquerels I have, I can get the dose rate uh, at, a, at a specified distance, and then I can um, use that to figure the dose rate at a different distance. Okay, this is an older one. This is from the uh, Radiological Health Handbook. It was published in 1970 uh, by the uh, Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Uh, it's uh, still out there. Uh, it's still in use. Uh, Gamma rays haven't changed very much. It gives these these dose rates. The gamma factor. I don't. I cut off the um, the uh, footnotes, but this is the dose rate at in Rankins per hour from one curie of a source at one meter. Or you you divide this by ten to get it in millirem per hour for a millicurie. Now, I do want to point out that there is a way to, to get this approximate formula for the traditional units. Um, notice that this is our mass attenuation coefficient, and it's almost constant over a wide range of energies, uh, about two or so um, square centimeters per gram over a distance from, say, 100 keV to 3 or three MeV, let's say. Now, under those conditions, or in that energy range, the, the, all we had was energy 
times mu e n over rho, right? So the all those conversion factors we did in, in, in uh, the attrition units would be one half n is the yield number of photons per decay, c is the activity in curies, and e is the energy in MeV. So after you're doing all the conversions, you end up with one half NCE gives you the dose rate at in R per hour at one meter. Uh, if we choose a different distance, then uh, there's another uh, approximate formula that's commonly used. It's six NCE. That's R per hour at a foot from a curie. Um, and these letters, there's nothing sacred about them, but those are commonly used. People will quote the one half NCE or the six NCE. And that's all I had today. This should set you up for uh, your assignment. Uh, that was a little bit complicated, so I thought I'd go through this with you um, before I ask you to do it this week. Have a great uh, week today. Uh,